Well, I guess you know what this means. Montage. <gasps> Does this mean... Does this mean I'm finally a real maker? Okay. It says here, a maker slash internet scientist gets their instantaneous build skill when they start believing their own bullshit. Hmm, I don't know about that. Anyways, today is a very exciting day. Hi, this is Max, and you're watching the first installment of Turbing Off With Friends, also known as the Turbine Challenge. A week or two ago, I uploaded a video with some pretty sparse instructions on how to submit a design. And let me tell you, I'm gonna have to revisit that video. There's a few things I seem to have left out that are kind of important, but that time was not lost. I tried some things out, stuff exploded, you know, the normal things that happen to people in their day to day. Anyways, I found a new technique that has helped reduce the premature explosions, because honestly, it's a little frightening when it happens. The new technique is called lying. It's pretty simple. You just lie about your nozzle size. And it's not like I've already been doing something similar for most of my adult life. So I don't know why it never occurred to me to try this with 3D printing. All you do is lie to your slicer and it results in a surprisingly accurate line width, even if my nozzle is much smaller. And that is where this trick differs from my past experience. How does this solve my exploding issue? Well, a thicker line width makes the blade profiles more rigid. There's your hot tip for today. Lie about your nozzle size. What the sh was this episode about again? Oh, right. Some of you sent me in your turbine blade designs. Let's see what you all sent me. First, the NACA0018 from a subscriber named Milton, which Milton uses in their turbines. This blade has a pitch angle of zero degrees, so it's probably gonna have issues starting in my wind tunnel. What is a NACA though? NACA is a way of describing an airfoil shape with four digits. I'm gonna leave a link to some NACA profiles and Milton's YouTube down in the description. Now, the NACA0018 is a common airfoil that I find in a lot of research papers. And you can probably guess why. And if you can't guess why, we'll probably find out today. Next, we have a blade profile sent in from another YouTuber named Lloyd from the channel It's and Bits 1. Link in the description, of course. Lloyd tells me that they've been working with turbines for about 25 years. This blade, the Rimkick 7, great name by the way, is a blade of their own design. And I'm hopeful. This thing looks awesome. This one has a bit more pitch, so I think it's probably gonna be able to start on its own. Lastly, but not leastly, we have something different. This is a drag style blade from a viewer named Caroline, and they've simply called it Scoop. The difference between a drag blade and an airfoil is drag blades use drag to produce torque, and airfoils use lift. Let's test them. Okay, let's see where these blades landed on the leaderboard. First up is Scoop. Scoop produced 0 0.0319 watts, landing between the Cone of Shame and the Jellyfish Turbine. Next up on the list is the NACA0018, submitted by Milton. It made 0 0.120 watts and falls just under the potato. And finally, the Remkick 7, producing the most out of the three at 0.4484 watts, places it right between the lumpy airfoil and the not lumpy variant. Nice. <coughs> Gosh, dang it. Get out of my lungs. So I know these are not the results that some of you were probably expecting. And I'd like to help with some theories as to why this is happening. First, this turbine is not rigidly constrained at the top. The blades could be doing some nonsense. The only way I would be able to tell is if I had a high speed camera which I don't. But I think more importantly, it's the scale at which these tests are being run. Because these blades are small, it means very small things have very large consequences most notably mechanical drag or friction. It seems to be enough to stop airfoils with very low or no pitch angles from reaching their maximum speeds. Where is all of this friction coming from? The generator. And again, this is my fault for being cheap. If my math is wrong, and it always is, I think we're losing about two milliwatts of power just from friction. And for some of these turbine designs, that's like five to 6% of the power that they generated. But for now, I have a plan to completely do away with the transmission in the current setup and replace this shitty generator with a more better one. But for right now, I'm gonna share a workaround that you can use in your designs. Oh, and I don't think that this workaround will work for the drag style blades, but who knows? I found that pitch angles between six and 14 degrees, depending on the airfoil, perform best with the current shitty setup. Here, watch. 
I've printed both the NACA 0018 and the RimKick 7 again, both using a higher pitch angle. And I'm not saying right now because I'm in the process of making a video specifically about pitch angles. Let's take a look at the effect that this has in the wind tunnel. So yeah, they're much better with a bit more pitch. In fact, with the Rimkick 7, it doubled its output. This is likely not a good example of how they'll perform in real life. So take these tests with some salt. They are for fun. And I'm going to keep improving the tunnel. Now, these are not the original specs given to me by their designers. So I'm not going to update the scores in the leaderboard. You know, unless you think that's fair. Let me know down in the comments. Also, I wanted to point out that those were the highest outputs I've ever seen in my wind tunnel. So regardless, nice job. And we are getting so close to breaking that one watt barrier. Maybe next time. I'm including a picture of a graph from some tests that I'm doing for the pitch angle video. Hopefully it will help some of you with your next designs. If you wanna see more of this type of content, let me know, give the video a like, and if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, thanks, bye.